first step in taking a reading on the polar emitter is to fill the polar emitter cell. The polar emitter cell will look something like this, and the liquid goes in through here, but you need to be careful because it most likely does not have any end caps on it. So you need to put the end caps on first. So this is the end cap, like this. It screws onto here, but the first thing we need to do before we screw it on is we need to put, excuse me, the O-ring like this, and then the glass window like this. So O-ring first, then my glass window, and then I screw it on like this. And we put the other one on. I've already put the O-ring and the glass window in there and screw it on like this. Like that. So now you can see I've attached both end caps with O-ring and glass window. My solution goes in here. So let me do that. So I have my solution over here. And I'm going to pour it in through here. Like this. And it's tricky to do. It's very important that we don't have any air bubbles <coughs> in front of our windows. So what you need to do is you need to keep tilting it so that the air bubbles end up in the middle. Like this. So you can see I filled it, but I have a big air bubble down here. So I need to tilt it back like that and then I'm going to fill it some more oops it's tricky sometimes to do like that and then like that come on and I've got a couple more air bubbles that I need to tilt to get like that and then I'm fine what I'll do next is there's a stopper to put in. You put the stopper in like that, and you have filled the polarimeter cell. So now that we've filled the polarimeter, I want to talk about taking a reading on the polarimeter. And there are two different types of polarimeters we have. One of them is the full circle polarimeter, and the other one is called the half circle polarimeter. And I want to talk about taking readings on both of them. So first, with the full circle polarimeter, the first thing you want to do is you want to open the sample chamber, which is right here. Then you're going to take your cell, which you filled with liquid, and place it into the sample chamber. I want you to notice that once, once the uh, uh, cell is in there, you're not going to be able to close the sample chamber. It would bang up against the cell like that, so that's not going to work. So just leave it open. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to read the polarimeter through the eyepiece, which is right here. You're going to, uh, we'll talk about what you're going to see in a minute. You're going to adjust the eyepiece like this. What you're going to be seeing when you look through the eyepiece of the full circle polarimeter is a circle with regions of light and dark. If it's adjusted to the wrong place, what you will have is a band down the middle. So you'll either have very light on both sides and a dark band down the middle or very dark on both sides and a light band down the middle like this now if it's adjusted to the right place you won't have a band down the middle it will be uniform in darkness it won't be as dark as the darkest band and won't be as light as the lightest band will be somewhere in between and that's the correct spot let's talk about reading the full circle polar emitter this is the scale on the full circle polar emitter and optical rotations can either be positive or negative and we'll talk about cases of both this is what your scale will look like if you have a sample that has a positive rotation what we're going to focus on is this is zero right here. This zero is sort of smaller than the ones that these numbers in general are smaller than the ones on the outside. And we want to really look where this small zero shows up. This small zero will show us where we're going to read the large scale. So this small zero right here is somewhere between 9 and 10. That means my rotation is somewhere between 9 and 10. Now, it's nine point something. To figure out what that something is, we look at where the lines on the two different scales line up. See, you can see right here, they don't line up very well. And up over here, 
let's see over here they don't line up very well but if we go to right about here the lines on the two scales actually over here they line up even better they line up perfectly right here so this is six it's actually 6.0 because we could have 6.5 and this is 6.0 that means that the reading on this is nine because between nine and ten point six zero nine point six zero and it's plus nine point six zero because we're looking at the numbers above the zero so zero would be down here somewhere so zero ten twenty this is nine point six zero let's talk about what the scale will look like if you have a sample with a negative rotation i want to remind you on the sample with a positive rotation this zero right here was up in this region i think it read between the nine and the ten because we had a sample with a reading of plus 9.60 this sample that we're looking at now has a negative rotation you'll notice the zero is on the small scale is below the large scale it's reading somewhere down here it's in this case between the 168 and the 169 if we look to see where the two scales match the best i think they match the best right there on the seven so this has a reading of 168.7 that does not mean the sample has a rotation of 168.7 remember this is a sample with a negative rotation the reading on this particular sample is 168.7 minus 180 equals 11 excuse me a negative 11 3. So the optical rotation for this sample is minus 11.3. For the half circle polarimeter, it's similar but not exactly the same. So we put we put our sample in again, and we're going to be reading through the through the eyepiece like this, like the eyepiece is right there, and we adjust it over here like this. And for the half circle polarimeter, what you're going to be seeing when you look through the eyepiece is um, two half circles. If it's in the wrong place, one of the circles will be dark, half circles will be dark, and one will be light. If you get it to the right spot by adjusting the scale right here, it will be similar to the first full circle polarimeter. It won't be dark or light on either side. It will be equally um, dark or equally light, however you want to look at it. It will be uniform in color. talk a little bit about reading the half circle polarimeter. It's a lot like reading the full circle polarimeter. There are two scales. On this lower scale, the most important thing is this zero. This zero points to where you will read the upper scale. In this particular example, the zero is between the 19 and the 20. So the reading for this sample is somewhere between 19 and 20. If we look at the lines on the lower scale, we try to find out where they line best with the upper scale. And what I'm seeing is the two scales line up the best right here. This, is, this would be 19.1, but they line up best at 19.2. So the reading for this particular sample is 19.2. Since we're in this side of the polar minute, zero would be somewhere over here. So zero, 10, 20, 30. This is plus 19.2. So this sample has a positive optical rotation. On the previous sample that we looked at, the zero on the bottom scale was to the right of the zero on the top scale. That's because the optical rotation of the previous sample that we looked at was positive. In this case, the zero on the bottom scale is to the left of the zero on the top scale that's because this sample has a negative optical rotation but we read it the same way the zero on the bottom scale is between the four and the five so the sample that we're looking at right now has a reading somewhere between four and five then we look at where the two scales line up the best and i'm seeing that it lines up at the five right here so the optical rotation of this sample would be 4.5 but it's to the left of the zero on the top scale so this would be negative 